there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do a very quick and loose painting of a ballerina. My inspiration for this was the Nutcracker uh, Sugar Plum Fairies, and I thought it would be really fun to do on a card so that you could have it as a Christmas card. Now I wanna show you a couple other Christmas cards that I painted. This was my first attempt at a ballerina for my imagination. I didn't, it didn't come out as good as I'd hoped, but it was, this was the start that led to that, so I'm okay with it. Um, and also, I like to keep my pencil lines in because seeing those kind of like um, immediate scratchy lines I think add character to the piece but um, you don't have to it's just something to think about and this painting here of an angel I did um, because I had the photo on my phone of my daughter in a Halloween costume this year and I thought for a Christmas card it'd be kind of cute to have an angel and uh, just an angel with attitude that is my daughter and I thought that was kind of fun too we actually did this in our last class of that watercolor course I was taking he said you can paint whatever you want but you are you're limited to 15 minutes five minutes of drawing and ten minutes of painting and that is it and it was really fun and freeing I enjoyed it quite a bit I don't know if my classmates did but uh, but I sure liked it after doing a very large very long paintings so what I'm going to use here is just a small palette of watercolors you can use whatever you have um, this is just the introductory 12 set of Lucas paints from our sponsor Jerry's Artorama.com these are about $32 I think 32 35 and that in that um and that margin and uh, it's, these are artist grade, so it's a really nice way to get started and not spend a ton of money. I'm going to start, and I'm just going to use a round brush the whole way through. I'm using a number six round. You can, this brush has seen better days. It's got a little, a little bend to it, but I think it'll be fine. And I'm going to start by adding some water randomly to the piece. So this technique is kind of, uh, just kind of a loose technique. Uh, I want my colors to be able to flow together. I want this to have a very watercolory look, kind of what you think of sometimes when you're when you're looking at watercolors, the colors merging into one another and uh, and whatnot. And so, just kind of, I'm not completely wetting everything, but I'm making sure that whatever I do wet, I'm cool with my colors floating there. I'm gonna start off with some yellow ochre. And I always like to kind of work it out on my palette after I dip into the pan because um, sometimes you can get a like a you can get a big clump of color and not realize that you've got that much color on your brush. So when you wiggle it out on your pan, you disperse it into the brush nice and easy. And I'm just gonna kind of go in and throw in some of the tutu. Notice my brush strokes are going um, kind of starting at the belly and going out to the edges of the tutu, so I get that kind of feeling and movement of the tutu. Tutu is a fun word to say. Tutu, -too. and I am going to put a little bit of this into the bodice as well. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of skin t skin color. And what I'm going to use is yellow ochre. I'm going to use a little burnt sienna. Ooh, that's a little too much. I'm going to add a little ultramarine blue. And that's a nice shadow color, but I do want to make something a little bit lighter. So I'll take a little bit of that color. Add ultramarine, I'm sorry, um, yellow ochre, a smidgen of magenta, or whatever cool red you're using. And so there we got a nice light. We got a light color, and we've got a darker color. And that's very pink now, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna go in. See, it looks pretty skin tony once you put it down there. Um, I'm working on a paper that's fairly heavily sized, but very inexpensive. This is a Canson. Um, I'm sorry, Strathmore greeting card. Actually, I've used the Canson ones too. They're both very good. They're a cellulose paper, but I find they behave really well uh, for this sort of technique where you're painting really loosely. I also like the Canson Wind Power paper, and that has a nice hard sizing on it. So what that basically means when I say sizing, it's a glue that's been added to the paper, and it keeps your paint from um, like soaking in and feathering out. So think of like paper towels as an unsized paper, and think of like watercolor paper, like Arches watercolor paper is a really heavily sized paper. Uh, but there are wood pulp papers that are also very heavily sized that will be much less expensive and give you the effects that you're going for. And the effect that I'm going for here is that I want it to stay, I want my paper to stay wet enough so that I can go in and paint everything and not have things dry too quickly on me. I'll get the foot back here that's kind of up on its toe. My my foot did get cut off. It really got cut off on the card. So what I did was I took my card, I put it on my light box and put a new card on top and drew it over and just shifted it up a little bit so the hand would be right up in the corner so I could get a little more foot in there. But I still it's still off there a little bit. So, you know, you can adjust that. If you print out the pattern, you can adjust the size and whatnot. Uh, now I'm going to grab a little of this darker color. 
and put it in the darker areas. I would think it'd be a little darker. Actually, I'm in a little more red. It has a magenta to that. It looks a little, a little too gray without the magenta. So I'm on the top of the legs where the skirt would be catching a shadow of the knees, because the knee will often give a little shadow and define the leg. I think if you're like if you're trying to paint, uh, one of the worst things can be having too many choices. So I originally was thinking I'm going to use my large uh, set of Lucas watercolors, which is right here. But then I realized, you know, even I and I've been painting for a long time. Even I sometimes grab the wrong color because there's so many there. So I would definitely recommend if you're beginning, um, start with a smaller thing. Or if you got a big set, because sometimes oftentimes it's cheaper per color to get the bigger set. Get the bigger set, but maybe get another box, an empty box, and just put those colors that you use all the time in that box. And then you can always get a tube or replacement pans if you do use them up. Um, but it will just it'll take one more um, consideration out, one chance, one little chance of failure out as you're painting, and it'll make it just much more enjoyable because you're not going to be sitting there worrying if you're if you've got the right red or the wrong red or you know you won't be worried about having too many things going on we're just going to suggest kind of the eye sockets there uh the face is still a little too wet to put any detail in i'm going to go for some magenta and add that to the tutu again we're going to get it worked out on our palette because we don't sometimes we don't know this is a just a inexpensive synthetic brush and it will it'll pick up a lot more color than a softer one because it doesn't hold quite as much water. So that's just something to consider. My favorite brushes are the Mimic um, Faux Squirrel brushes, but they can be a little juicy uh, and wet for um, for beginners, especially if you're new to artist quality watercolors. Uh, you could end up with a lot more a lot more color than you're intending, which is not a bad thing, but this is just so easy. Problem is I like it all. <laughs> I like that magenta on its own. It's so crisp and pretty. Now, if you want to have um, a color that doesn't move so much, what you want to do is wipe your brush off with like a paper towel. You want to remove any extra paint, or you could go with a smaller brush, but I really don't think we need to here. Just wipe off the extra paint and then pick up your color. So it's almost like a toothpaste-y consistency, and you can see it on the tip of your brush. And then you can go in and you can kind of like, see if you wanted to like define an edge. You can do that and even though you're going next to wet paint, that is not going to flow quite as much because you've got such a thicker concentration of it. So you can get those kind of accented lines. If you need a finer accented line, then of course switch to a smaller brush. I find like with this, as long as I get the edge crisp that I need to against dry paper, then I can then I can go in and just let it kind of do its thing. I want to get a little bend in the toe so you can see that her leg is her back leg is slightly bent and she's got her toe down. And I want to get that little crisscross of the ballet laces on the front toe and fatten up the foot a little bit. So you can see that you've got you've got some more shoe there, you've got the front of the foot, and you've got some ankle. Uh, we got a crown and we also have some brown hair. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, take that burnt sienna. I'm not sure if that's burnt sienna or English red to be absolutely honest with you. It's a PR 101 color. I'm going to mix a smidgen of the, you could also use the, I think it's a sepia in this set. It's actually a really nice sepia. It doesn't look really, it doesn't look gray. Like some sepias have a kind of a gray undertone. That one's nice and rich. You could use that, but I want to just stick to colors that I've already used. Um, because for such a small piece like that, I don't want to get into anything too weird. So I'm putting a little bit of that darker color there at the base of the, the crown and the hair. And now I'm going to wipe my brush off. I don't need to rinse it all off, but I do want to wipe it off. I'm going to get some of that other less blue mix and add that in. And flick up a few details on the crown. Then I'm going to go in with a fairly dry brush in yellow ochre. Not dry like it's going to leave a, leave a texture, but um, not like really, really juicy. And of course, go to a smaller brush if this is uncomfortable. And I'll paint my crown in. Make sure to leave little bits of white so that so that it shows that there's like some some light coming through there. 
And with the yellow ochre on my brush, I'm going to pick up some magenta so I have a little bit more of a reddish pink. And I'm going to go in and add some details here. Don't need to put a lot, but I do like to, I want to get a little bit of that color because I think it's nice and warm and Christmassy. Oh, some of that in the shoe would be nice too, I think. Even though I guess ballerinas usually have much lighter shoes. Put a little bit of yellow ochre. I'm wondering, I don't think I did, I think I just used yellow ochre for my yellow. Is that yellow ochre? Um, because I do seem to see a brighter yellow in there, but I think that was just the yellow ochre. Yeah, that was just yellow ochre on its own. And add that to the tutu for a spark of color and texture. Gives it that kind of fluffy, fluffy lightness. And add a little bit to the ribbons. And that will help kind of break the feet apart from the leg. And I noticed I didn't quite bring that color around enough for her fingers. Luckily, I still have some on my palette, so I don't have to try to match that color. I'll clean my palette till I'm all done a painting. And look, I'm just, I am just like hinting at the, at everything here. Um, and that's kind of a, a good quality if you don't have a reference photo to go from, if you're trying to go from your imagination or something you remembered. If you can do that, it's going to give you... Um, it's just going to give you a much better, a much better, um, effect because if you don't know exactly what you got there, it's just easier not to paint it in. So maybe the face will be a little bit enough wet that I can put some blush, a little mark for the mouth. Maybe just a little... I usually don't want to put too much detail or it can kind of ruin the effect. Um, if I want to do a little bit of shading, I can. I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm not sure if things are, things are still wet. So I'm, I think I'm all right to do some shading. It'll blend a little bit. The key is, and you've probably heard me say this before, pretend like you're getting charged $10 a brush stroke. Okay. You want to work with an economy of, of strokes with a project like this, because that's going to give you, um, it's going to give you that kind of deliberate, that deliberate immediate, immediacy that, that you want. And even like though I'm the same painter and I traced my first drawing for, for the second card, these two pictures still look very different. Now if you want you can add some splashes. Um, I think I will because I didn't on the other one so why not? I think that'd be kind of fun. Just make sure you don't have anything. I'm going to move my other card out of the way because I don't want splashes on that one. And again, complete personal preference. You don't have to do this. And sometimes I'll just dab in a little bit of water and kind of let like it look like she's been just dancing right along and she's like leaving a sparkly, uh, you know, sparkly path of wonderfulness in her past. But I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I like it. I think it's cute. I'm actually going to remove this tape here so I can carry my little feet sparkles off to the edge. Ooh, let's put a little blue in there while we're at it. You know what? I was thinking, oh, I didn't do it in that card either. One of these cards, oh, this one right here, I used some of that cyan color, and it was, and it's really pretty. I kind of wish I did it on this one, but I've already gotten so far into what colors I added, so I don't really want to at this point, but that would have been pretty in there too. But really, with colors, I think when you're painting, when in doubt, leave them out. Make what, if you can make those values of what you have, um, you're going to have greater harmony if you just stick with what you've been, you know, the colors you've been using all along. Unless it's early enough in the painting that, you know, you can, um, you can add it in, add it in in enough places so it makes sense. I want a little more, uh, just a little bit of contrast to her waist and her tummy here. Break her bodice away from her arm. And... I think I can pretty much call that done. I used a little shadow on the foot to give it a little weight. 
And there you have it. This is so much fun. Look at that. We did that in 15 minutes. And um, this is something if you, you know, print out your pattern, you can trace it on a bunch of cards and practice. And then when you're done, you've got a stack of cards that you can send out to your family and friends. And who wouldn't love to get that? You can do that in different colors. You can size up the pattern. So what you want to do, it's a JPEG. So you print it out at five by seven if you want to do it on a card. If you want to um, do it on a painting, you can print it out eight and a half by 11. Um, so it fills a standard size printer paper. Or if you want to do something really big, you could always post or print it. And that's usually a setting found in your properties of your printer. If you ever want to make a picture large so you can put it on a larger piece of paper, it'll print it out over several sheets and you tape them together. And then you can transfer them that way with graphite paper over the light box. So um, there's just some ways to get you started. I really recommend if you're going to do this, even if you're making it larger, I would still try to keep it um, like loose. Try not to overdefine it. Try to just let the spirit of the ballet dancer um, come through and just keep it fun and loose. And uh, this was so much fun to make. I hope you enjoyed it. I couldn't wait to share this with you. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.